what is going on with this market guys this is like we got some weird things happening let's get into it what is up everybody Derek here from simply home I'm the state of Michigan broker uh, I've got an all-star team of agents so whether you're looking to buy sell invest rent whatever you need we've got you covered we even do property management now so I know normally I do, you know, in the middle of the month, I usually do a market update video where I break everything down by city and just kind of give you the stats, let you know what the state of the market is. And we're still going to do that this month, but I wanted to jump in and, and, uh, and, and just give like an overall Metro Detroit what's going on in the market right now because we're seeing our market's not behaving like it typically does this time of year. So I'm going to get into it, talk about what's happening and why I think what's happening is happening and uh just give you a little bit more of a lowdown on 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 all that craziness but before i do that uh this is october 9th when i'm shooting this uh that hurricane milton is bearing down on florida so first and foremost um you know i know we've got a lot of subscribers that that live in florida uh obviously i like most people i know a ton of people that that live there as well and got lots of friends and family down there so first and foremost just want to keep you guys in my thoughts if you're in florida and uh, hope everybody stays safe this is not a hurricane to mess around with doesn't look like so um get the safety stay dry stay safe first and foremost uh and uh now back to the to the real estate related stuff in detroit so the last couple of videos, I've kind of been talking about this a little bit, but I want to get a little bit more in depth because we're seeing a couple of things happen right now with the market where, you know, this isn't new. We're seeing, you know, rates significantly drop. Like this time last year, we were almost at 8%. I think we peaked out at like 8.13 at the very end of October, beginning of November of 2023. And as of today, the average 30-year fixed rate conventional mortgage is 6.12 so we have dropped two percentage points in a year which thankfully that's happened we needed it but that's a massive drop and the good news is with that we're not done i don't think unless something crazy happens with the economy um you know inflation comes roaring back or something like that uh we're going to continue to see rates drop probably for the next like I don't know, a couple of years, I would imagine. Uh, I know the Fed's talked about lowering rates at least one more time this year in 2024. Uh, they might even do it twice. And then, you know, gradually uh, cutting rates again throughout 2025. So uh, that is welcome news, definitely. Uh, in my, uh, my home buyers are definitely very happy about that. And we've had the opportunity to refinance uh, uh, several of our, you know, people that we sold homes to for over the last couple of years. Um, you know, if you have, per and if you're watching this, and even if I didn't sell you, you your home, uh, but maybe you, if you've bought something, you, you can't, uh, you can't refinance until you've made six payments on your mortgage. So uh, you need to be six months out from purchasing. But basically, anybody that bought their home from like the last six months to maybe about the last 26, 27 months. Uh, rates should be lower now than what you got for your property. So, uh, you know, if you are, you know, it, it potentially could be a, a, a wise idea to refinance. Like it's going to be a case by case basis. It's not always the best move, but, uh, you know, at this point you might be able to save yourself some money on a monthly payment by refining. And, uh, if you have any questions about that, just reach out. But, um, you know, we've had the opportunity to uh, get our uh, several of our, our, our clients into lower monthly payments now just due to the, the rates dropping so fast. But the main thing that's impacting our market right now is inventory. Like I know we've been talking about this like a broken record for years now. Uh, literally the past three years have been some of the lowest inventory years in, I don't wanna say history, but out of the last like 50, 60 years, um, you know, we were scraping the bottom of the barrel for inventory and that's what was leading to these really high prices, you know, properties, property values going up, you know, 18, 19, 20% year over year. That's because there weren't enough homes on the market to sell. And, you know, for every buyer, you know, there's like 15 buyers for every house that obviously is going to drive the price up. So 
we're kind of seeing the uh, the antidote to that happen right now. And uh, with the inventory level that we're at right now, like last year, 2023, perfect example, it was uh, September and October where the market peaked out and started going down in inventory. We peaked at 2.3 months of inventory. It was 2.3 in September and October, and then we started dipping down. And it usually it'll it'll bottom out usually in February and then come back up. It's a seasonal fluctuation. We've talked about this many times on this channel. But as of right now, in October 2024, we've got 2.8 months worth of inventory already, and it doesn't show any signs of slowing down. Like normally we'll see the curve like that. Right now we're on like a 45 degree angle trajectory. Um, it hasn't, I don't know when it's gonna peak. So that's probably going to be a topic that we're talking about quite a bit until it does because, you know, 2.8 months of inventory is awesome. It's still way lower than where we were in like 2021, for example, um, or even you know before, prior to that, 2020, 2019. 2019, I think, was probably about the last normal year for real estate, and we were like we're still way below the amount of inventory that we had at that point. But we're headed in the right direction now. The only thing that I'm concerned about, I'm not really concerned. The thing that I'm monitoring is I don't want that to, I don't want that 45 degree angle to become a 90 degree angle. We're just like shooting through the roof on inventory. And I, I, I wanna make sure that we don't get to the point, you know, we're at 2.8 months of inventory right now. I don't wanna be at 8.8 months of inventory in, in a few months. That would be a, a, a problem in the other direction where we have way too much inventory. So we're gonna keep an eye on it. Obviously, I'll report back to you as, you know, as I monitor it and let you know where we're at but um, that's kind of really the, the main thing that where, where the market's not behaving like it typically would because right now is when we'd start to see, you know, inventory levels start to peak and decline and all we're seeing is more properties hit the market every single day. So normally what we'd see with the rates dropping so substantially and inventory going up is you'd think that we would have more sales happening but that's not what we're seeing right now. Between August and September, the number of closed sales actually went down 13%. So, um, you know, that's, I, I think maybe what we're, what we're experiencing, like, I, I think maybe there, we still have definitely some buyers on the sidelines that are waiting maybe for rates to go down even a little bit more. And on top of that, I'm thinking that, you know, savvy buyers will see that you know rates are going down that usually brings prices up but more importantly the inventory is going up quite a bit which usually brings prices down so i'm thinking with the with the lack of uh sales that we're experiencing and who knows it might pick right back up like we i personally haven't seen that in my own business or within the company we're still selling homes that are pretty pretty like a faster clip than we did last year I um, haven't really seen a, a dip in sales on our end, but you know, the numbers are the numbers, it's happening. But I think possibly people are waiting for prices to start dropping due to increased inventory, which it should happen. I think that that's like kind of the thing that we've been waiting to see is, are the lower rates going to raise prices up before the increased inventory drives them down? And what we're really seeing right now is they're kind of counterbalancing each other and the average sale price, even though we've seen 13% fewer homes sold month over month from August to September, we haven't seen a corresponding 13% drop in the average sale price. That's only down 3%, which is just a statistical blip. I mean, they're, they're always kind of up and down by a, a, by a few percent here and there. So, you know, that's the million dollar question is where is the market going to go and I mean, your guess is as good as mine, but I do have a couple ideas, and I think that's probably why you watch this channel. So let's get into it. And again, this is just a prediction, just based off of, I don't know, 21 years of obsessively tracking the, the market and the numbers and knowing exactly, you know, maybe not what's going to happen, but I keep, you guys are probably more informed uh, if you watch this channel on a regular basis than your typical real estate agent in the Detroit market, because I promise you, most agents don't have any clue what, you know, what the fluctuations are. They don't track numbers like I do. But um, I think probably what's gonna happen is we're going to continue to see inventory increase probably for about another month. I Normally it's like, 
as soon as like, you're about a week before Thanksgiving, the market just stops dead. Not stops dead, but it dramatically decreases in terms of you know just the number of homes sold. Like people aren't out looking at houses while they're you know Christmas shopping. That's just it's not a thing here in Michigan. The weather starts to get cold. People stay home. There's just not nearly the same um, deal flow in the winter months as you have in the fall and the spring and the summer. So I think what's going to happen is we're going to continue to see homes hit the market. I I also think we're going to, I don't think that, that the number of sales is going to keep decreasing. I think if anything, it'll just hold steady uh, because I know there's, there's so much pent up demand right now. Uh, so many people have been sitting on the sidelines uh, waiting to buy homes that now I, I think maybe we're going to start seeing prices kind of dip a little bit more because I do think the increased inventory is going to outweigh the lower interest rates. So unless the Fed just like cuts another, you know, 50 basis points or something and rates go down to like 5.6, um, you're going to, there's a lot of people that won't be able to resist that. I don't think we're going to see that yet. I think that as they cut rates, it's going to be very gradual, probably, I don't know, 20 quarter, quarter percent per, uh, per meeting, uh, of the Fed. We'll see what happens though. But um, I think what we're going to see is inventory continue to go up until probably for about another month. Like right before Thanksgiving, I think gravity is going to take over and we're going to see the number of new homes hitting the market slow down. And that's also common sense. Like a lot of people just don't want people tracking snow and ice and slush through their house in the middle of winter. Um, they want it to, if they're going to sell their home, they want to present it nicely. And, uh, and I'll get back to that in a second too. But uh, you know that's part of it as well. So and, and so people that that typically sell their homes in the winter time sell because they need to, not because they want to. And uh, that obviously translates into sometimes it translates into better deals for buyers as well. But the other thing that I'm kind of inferring from these numbers is the fact that we've got so many more homes on the market now than we did even a month ago, and our sales have dropped down all you know 13 percent but the average sale price hasn't is telling me, and this is something that we've talked about on this channel before as well, that I think sellers got kind of into some bad habits because they, you know, they didn't present their home necessarily in the best way that they could because they didn't have to, they knew it was going to sell. Like we, I, I've, I've talked about this quite a bit. I've shown so many homes that, you know, maybe there's peeling paint and dry rot on some of the trim on the exterior. Um, it's not landscape nicely like people aren't putting that effort in to really uh, you know creating that wow factor when people pull up to the house walk in the front door um, and I think those are the homes that aren't selling I really do uh, I think people that have that really been putting the effort in to to just like create a really nice experience for buyers those are the people that are selling their homes quickly and that's why the average sale price hasn't really dropped even though there's a lot more homes on the market. So if you are currently selling your home or thinking about it, um, you know, this is something that I always talk about when I meet with sellers and, and we're talking, going over their listing. I have, you know, how to prep your home for sale guide um, that I give to everybody. And if you want one, just let me know, I'll send it to you. But uh, it's, a, it's just a common sense, practical, step-by-step uh, -step thing that you need to do to, 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 to really uh, give your home that great first impression to buyers. It's nothing, you know, and again, my philosophy is never to dump a bunch of money into a home that you don't plan in, on living in anymore. Uh, it, that doesn't make sense to me at all. You price it for what it is and get it sold. But that being said, there is definitely something to be said for going to Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards or Ace Hardware or wherever, spending a couple hundred bucks, like even this time of year, some fresh mulch, uh, make sure it's landscaped nicely. If there's, you know, peeling paint, rotted, dry rot, make sure you just scrape and paint it. Like cr create that really good first impression because buyers, like just always, the psychology of buyers has always been, they're gonna know in the first, you know, 30 seconds to a minute, minute and a half of pulling up to your home and walking in the front door if it's someplace they can see themselves living. So you wanna make sure that you're creating that really great first impression, just wow them as they're walking in your home, you're gonna sell it for that, that much faster, for that much more money. And there's a you know, substantial uh, difference there between the homes that are sitting on the market for quite a while and the homes that hit the market, look beautiful, generate you know, 
some buzz as you know as it hits the market and to where there's plenty of showings maybe multiple offers and that's how you get your, your home sold quick for top dollar and in order to do that there's a little bit of effort that goes into it and i think some people just aren't putting forth that effort right now because they haven't had to for a few years now you do so uh, that's probably my main takeaway from all of this like what's going on in the market right now um, because I've, I've it, it's been great working with buyers right now because you know in the past the past few years it's like you take what you can get if you see something that's that's not a hard no I just just I, I've been telling all my buyers just write something on it if it's not your favorite house just put something in lower but you're increasing your chances of getting something under contract not getting outbid uh, because I've had pl uh, not plenty but a few people that have just like gotten frustrated uh, over the past couple of years because they kept writing offers on homes and just getting outbid every time so uh, That you're not going to run into that anymore and not right now in this market anyway, so um, that it, It's been awesome because there's plenty of uh, plenty of homes to look at every time we go out there's new stuff hitting the market daily and um, For the first time in a, in a while I've been able to negotiate prices down on the buy side So that's been pretty awesome. So um, that's basically kind of where we're at right now in the market it's still in, the, in a big state of flux I'm definitely gonna be making more videos about it so just stay tuned uh, you know keep an eye out if you have any specific questions you can always reach out to me my direct line is all is 586-491-5622 uh, call or text me anytime you can also reach me at 248-561-6155 or shoot me an email, Derek Warenka at simplyhome.com. I'm gonna keep my old email address live forever as well, dwarenka at m1realty.net, because most people have that. So, uh, but do the Simply Home one if, uh, if you can. And then I'm on the socials, uh, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, you name it, I'm on it. So, if, uh, you know, you need to get a hold of me, shoot me a DM, I'll respond quick and give you accurate information. And thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. I truly appreciate it. Um, this is, you know, this is what I do every day of my life is, is uh, check the, the real estate market in Detroit, Michigan and report back to you guys. And in the, in the meantime, I take uh, excellent care of my buyers and sellers and my agents. So, uh, you know, if you are an agent watching this and you are interested in Simply Home as well, give me a call because this is a phenomenal company to work for. Uh, it's been a really great move and I'm really happy that we, that we made the move. So, um, you know, I'd love to love, love to enlighten you more about what makes it great. So anyway, thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it. We'll talk soon. Have a great one.